Okay, welcome back to our coverage of the 2011 Neutral Light All-Stars here in Hamilton, Ontario. Joined once again by Dave Benning. Uh, Dave, an extremely scorching day here in Hamilton, but uh, two hard-fought games this morning. Uh, the first game, Ontario did, uh, did beat Team Atlantic 2-1, despite Team Atlantic taking the 1-0 lead. Give us your thoughts on that match. Uh, I thought it was a very good game. Uh, the advantage uh, is uh, with the fact that Ontario is playing the second game. And uh, the advantage on that is not the, the fatigue, but more so that the nervousness of all the players playing the first game about in, into the All-Stars and, and some for some it's the first time, some it's the second time. So they have that advantage. It was good to see them bounce back from uh, the result they had la uh, yesterday and they were able to get the result today 2-1. Having said that, Team Atlantis playing their first game, so they're a bit, their players are a bit more nervous, so we take that into consideration. But hats off to Team Atlantic. They, they came to play, they were pushing the ball around, they were um, they had a good team shape about themselves, they were confident, and they got the early goal. And uh, But credit also has to go to Ontario for not buckling under the pressure, not worrying about what happened yesterday, looking at what they could do today, and they came back and got the two goals. So it was good for that game. Absolutely. Ontario was under the caution that they needed the two goals to stay alive in the tournament, yeah. and they did so, so congrats to them. In the second game, we had uh, Team Sastoba take on um, Team BC. Uh, Team BC with a bit more quality in the end, winning the game 1-0. Again, it was absolutely scorching down here, so you know, difficult for the players to put in a, a real true performance. But what were your thoughts on that game? Well, I think it, it is hot, but I think that when we go to qualifying and we go in the Central America, it's going to be the same situation. More games are now played on turf, so whatever the temperature is up in the stands, it's uh, at least plus 5, plus 10 out on the turf for the players. But hats off to them as well that they, they worked hard. Manitoba, Saskatchewan team was in the same situation as Team Atlantic playing the first game that meant something in the, in the competition. BC's playing their second. Both teams had played games uh, yesterday. So the, the quality of the game was more of an even-steven game. Uh, that players all showed that they were, were good players, but nobody had taken uh, the next step to, to say, yeah, we'll take it. And so it was an even Steven game all the way through. But hats off to both, actually, for playing in the heat. And you've now seen all six teams in this group, about 108 players. Um, as a scout, that's a, that's a lot of players to look through, and I'm sure you've been, uh, been racking your brain trying to figure it all out. Yeah. As a coach in this position, what can you do to digest that information quickly and make, uh, make an accurate decision on, on who you want to incorporate into your next Canada squad? Well, nothing's perfect, right, because you have to take into a lot of considerations, uh, preparation time of the teams. Uh, we don't know what the coaches are expecting of the players, depending on the game tactics. So what we do is we look at the individual players. And on the first day, uh, the way I look at it, uh, which could be different from others, is that uh, can you capture the attention? Can, can you be playing where I said, hey, oh, I like that player? Is that player controlling the ball? Is that player having an impact on the game? Uh, is that player combining with others? Is that player a two-way player? Uh, we're not just defending and then just defending, 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 or we're just an attacking player where we don't do anything when we don't have the ball. So those are the things I looked down on the first day. The second day now comes that if you've captured the attention, can you be consistent about it? And that's what we're, we're looking at for those players. But players who are nervous the first day, it's good to have the second chance to capture the attention again. Uh, perhaps the nerves, uh, it was the first time you might have been playing. It just could be just the, the overall um, competition's overwhelming. So can you capture attention on the second day? So we still keep reviewing the players that might not have done well the first day. So we continue on so we don't lose it. Uh, on Friday, when we come back, now it's going to be a situation where we're starting to see teams that are playing their second game, uh, is that they're basically even. The player, There's always players who can do certain things on the field. And I'm very happy with the, the teams that are here at the under-15 age group that the players are more technically better than in previous years. And, and that's what we would expect the way that we're moving forward. But now on Friday... Uh, and hopefully later on tonight with the under 16s is that can you do something that really takes you all over the top that says uh, I, I can handle the pressure I can handle the competition I want to make a difference can they make that penetrating pass if you're a midfield player uh, the one that really sets up a goal opportunity is if you're a winger are you getting past the fullback and getting crosses in if I'm a defender I'm rock solid I'm like a wall I can I can man mark but I also can come out of the back and play the passes if I'm a fullback I'm dominant I'm not letting that winger get past me and as if I'm a goalkeeper number one job is to keep the ball out of the net and today uh, hats off to um, the goalkeepers who, who got the clean sheet. Absolutely. Dave Benning will be keeping his eye on players with that special X Factor again this afternoon as the U16 girls uh, take back to the pitch here at Ron Joy Stadium. Dave thanks again for your time.